Well, hello, everybody. It's your friend, James Shaw. Thanks so much for being here. Happy Wednesday to you. Thanks for watching in Pivot Shift Ahead on, and on the Inspire pages. We are back and better than ever. And we're in May. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And we're going to take some time out this month to focus on our mental health and make sure that we're in a good spot. We work in an industry that can be so competitive. Not only are we competing against ourselves, then sometimes we think we're competing against others. We've got expectations about what we wanted this year to look like and, and our, our, is our reality in alignment with those expectations and how do we feel about that? And it's just, there's a lot. And, and honestly, we don't talk about it enough. We, we don't take a look at it maybe as much as we should. So we're going to over the next handful of weeks here on Pivot Shift Ahead. We're going to start things off today. And I'm excited to have our guest, Kimberly, on. Kimberly, you want to introduce yourself? Tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. Oh, thank you so much, James, for having me here today. I am excited to be a part of your launch for Mental Health Awareness Month. My name is Kimberly Guyry. I am a MAPS performance coach. I lead the Life Coaches, and I am the KW Wellness Community Director. All of these roles allow me the opportunity to support amazing agents throughout Keller Williams. And part of that mental health is it's their psychological and emotional well-being. And as coaches, that's what we focus on as part of the KW Wellness Community Director. One of the pillars that I found to be most important for wellness is starting with our mindset and our mental health. Thank you, James, for allowing me to be here today. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. I saw you facilitate a panel at Family Reunion, which honestly was my favorite part of Family Reunion, period. Take all the general sessions, all the breakouts, even the stuff I led, yours was the best. And I think it's really important. And uh, the theme this year for, you know, kind of nationwide for Mental Health Awareness Month is that you're more than enough. And, and I think that's a great way to look at it for us. Would you talk about why that could resonate so well with our real estate community? Absolutely. When we think about that phrase, more than enough, what the National Association of Mental Health is telling us is it's an initiative and a campaign for us to acknowledge that no matter who you are, where you are in your where you are in your life or even in your business that you are enough that you are worthy of love you're worthy of support you're worthy of help and you're worthy of whatever it means to you to live a big and fulfilling life and in real estate we know that you know, this is a heavy producing we're we are top producers right that is what we aim for we aim for millionaire real estate agents we look for top producers. We're constantly giving awards. And all of those accolades are not only deserved, they come with a bit of a side effect. Often it can be at the impact of the person who's winning the awards. You know, how has this impacted their business? How has this impacted their mindset, their energy? And it also comes at those who are watching and observing, asking, why not me? How come I'm not up there? What am I not doing right? What may I do better? And we're constantly questioning ourselves to, and it helps to delimit who we are. All of those factors of what we're observing contribute to that feeling of maybe not being that you feel like you're enough. And so Mental Health Month is about reminding you that who you are in your skin to the core, it's more than enough. Yeah, it's a good reminder in, in a business that's isolating it's already isolating in itself. And so then we can get in our head a little bit and start to wonder and think things. And I love that you brought up two different perspectives. One is, you know, of the agent in the market center who is earning all the awards and is hitting their goals every month. We don't know how they feel about that. I've met many MREAs. I know you have too, who are going up on stage. They're, they are, they're making millions of dollars selling homes and they feel miserable their family life isn't good. I've met many, I know you have. Then we meet people who are behind goal and looking up and going, why can't I be up there? They're beating themselves up too. It doesn't help us either way. We, we've got to just recognize, I guess, that what where we are is where we are and it's okay. And, and let's get you on a path of moving the direction you're going. So what would you tell someone? How would you coach somebody? What advice would you give to someone who is either looking at this top producer and and feeling bad about where they are, or they are a top producer, and yet they know they don't have it all together. What advice would you give? Um, I think the, the reminder is your worth is not measured by your productivity. Your worth is not measured by your bank account. 
You deserve love and healing just as you are. You deserve celebration just for the sheer fact that you're showing up. Those measurements, those KPIs that we put on our productivity, that we put on our bank accounts, that we put on the cars we drive, the houses we live in, all of the other superficial, tangible things that we look at as a definition of success, those are, those are the after effects. The sheer fact that you've woken up in the morning, that you've made a decision to your commitments, that you are committed to your activities, that you are stepping into your skin and you're giving yourself grace, you've won the day. And we have to find little small steps along the way to our goals that remind us that, hey, I'm okay. Hey, I'm doing this. And I'm doing it in a way that works for me. That's really good. My guess would be there are some common challenges that, that people in this industry face when it comes to their mental health. Can you talk a little bit about what some of those are? Um, I would say probably the ones that as a coach is heard the most is burnout, overwhelm, stress, feeling moments of depression, whether that's self-diagnosed or clinically diagnosed. And if you think about these words, uh, depression, burnout, overwhelm, those are energy draining words. It's words that, that when you think about the word depression, right, it's a depressed. When you think about burnout, we've gotten to the edge of something and we can't go anymore. Overwhelm. There's so much happening to us at the say at once that we don't have a chance to breathe. So all of these are what we're taking in. And we have an opportunity to just say, what am I feeling in this moment? And one of the best ways to work through it is through our breath. And so allow ourselves space to breathe when we're having those moments of overwhelm or burnout and ask, what do I need? Because we're running through life at such a pace that we forget that we are part of our business. We, If we're not functioning at a high level, James, everything else is just a shadow of what could be real. What are some signs that we're experiencing overwhelm or burnout? What are some, in other words, how can we become aware that we're experiencing something so that we can take steps to, to kind of overcome that before it gets out of control? Yeah. That's one of the tricky things about overwhelm and burnout. We often don't see it until we're in it. It's that hydration theory, that, that moment that you think, oh, wow, I'm thirsty. You've actually been dehydrated for quite some time. And so when we are experiencing burnout, we're already in it, which means we've probably been burnt out before we acknowledge it. And how do we know it's there? We're tired. We might be short, cranky, not sleeping well. Our diet might be off. Our routine might be off. We may not be appreciating our lives or we might be harder on ourselves than usual. And we just see life through a very foggy lens where we feel stuck. We feel that we don't have many options and choices. And we don't feel like we have any resources that can help us. Those are very good signs that you might be in a state of overwhelm, burnout, and at a place where you need a break. If you're in overwhelm and burnout, then what would your recommendation be to help kind of right the ship, to, to be able to get your mental state back in a space that is productive and helpful to you and the people around you. Yeah, you start with you. When you acknowledge it, when you name it, you can claim it. So once you are aware, we say in coaching awareness is the first step to change. When you are aware that there is something happening, it gives you the opportunity to make a different decision about it. And the first thing you can do is look at your calendar and say, where have I made time for myself? Where am I pouring into me each day to ensure that I have more to give? Because we, we say you can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah, that phrase has been modified. And now we say, instead of pouring from the cup, what if you poured from the saucer? What if you were so filled up inside of yourself that everything else 
was a bonus. Again, not taking away from you. So first, where on your calendar do you exist? Second, what are you saying yes to? That certainly could be a no. Because we often believe that we're the only person that can do something or can be at the closing or has to take this buyer, or has to talk to the seller when we have a team that we can leverage that out to. And if you're a solo agent, well, is it time to consider someone to partner with? Is it time to bring on a showing assistant, even if it's a pay per door? Is it time to make that first hire for a virtual assistant or a full time assistant? Where can you say no to win back time and win back space? The third part is if you are at a heightened state, it's time to talk to someone. That can be a licensed therapist, a counselor. You can enlist the support of a coach. And while a coach does not diagnose, a coach can support in the dialogue of mental health. And if you are at a point where it's complete overwhelm, it's time to stop. Put on the brakes, block out your calendar, cancel the appointments, and focus on you. And take a mental health day. It's a real thing. You can actually check out from your business to check back into your life. That's really good. So the notes I took, time you need time for you. We talk a lot about, inside of this community, uh, the 137. This, we learned this from Jordan Freed. You know yes. Jordan. And um, <laughs> he's, the, the guy is a genius. And, and he's, this is an, an important topic for him, too. He talks about the 137. One non-real estate day a week one three-day weekend a month, one seven-day vacation a quarter. When we share that with people, they, they sometimes they can't even get past the one non-real estate day a week, and yet it's so important for our mental health and something I encourage you to adopt. You, number two, you talked about leverage. You know, th there are easy ways to add leverage into your world. You could use a transaction coordinator per transaction just to get out of that part of it so you can get a little bit of time back. I love that. Knowing when it's time for some sort of professional help and and by the way, it might be easier to figure that out if you're in a coaching relationship. You said, you know, your coach can't diagnose and isn't a healthcare professional, but they might be able to warn you or remind you or nudge you to go get some help when necessary. And then four mental health days are totally cool and they go back into number one. Why don't you have one of those every single week and you'll be in really good shape? It's, it's a hard thing for us to do, but it's something we must. And, and I think, you know, the community and who you hang out with matters as well. I see that inside of Pivot Shift Ahead. You see it with KW Wellness. We're going to talk about your community in just a minute. But I also think there can be a drawback to being in community. Inside of Pivot Shift Ahead, while we are definitely an open, caring, welcoming, honest, transparent community, I think sometimes we might put on a smiley face to put on a smiley face. How important is it, Kimberly, that you're just honest with yourself about where you are and what you're feeling right now and not necessarily just put on a show for others? Yeah. James, I would say that's probably the number one way to I acknowledge what am I feeling, what am I experiencing, is being honest with yourself, is putting that mirror up to your own face and saying, are the people that I'm with pouring into me, are they draining my energy? Are the stories that I'm hearing from others inspiring me? Are they lifting me up? Are they causing me to rise? Or am I leaving this call feeling less than and not enough. The social connections are amazing. And if we lean too heavily only on one source, if something happens in that one source, it changes everything. So it's good to expand your networks. This pivot shift community is so important. And so are your local communities and your social communities and communities have nothing to do with real estate. Right? The more well-rounded that we can be, the more that we can tap into different parts of our lives that connect to what our values are and what makes us shine, the more opportunity we have to become resilient. So when things may not be going back, going right in your business, or you're in that comparison mode, you can look at other parts of your life and say, you know, business may not be good today. Yeah, man, I really knocked it out of the park at the gym. Or I had such a fantastic time with my family Sunday night, or I'm going to have an incredible date night this weekend. Right? We look at the full picture and we make all seven circles of our life, just like we have seven circles in wellness, 
we make all of that part of how we become sustainable that supports our well-being. Mm. That's really good. Will you tell people a little bit about KW Wellness? Because this is a topic you're passionate about, and that's why they've asked you to lead the charge on this. Tell us about your KW Wellness community. Oh, thank you, James. KW Wellness is our newest KW community that launched this year at Family Reunion. And the focus of KW Wellness is to create a culture of well being through education, training, and events for our associates, our leaderships, and our agents. It's based on seven pillars, one of those being mental health. We also look at emotional health, physical, which includes nutrition, social connections, which you've done a great job at with Pivot Shift, your occupational relationship, which is that work-life counterbalance, and also your spiritual centering. All seven of these pillars combined create your well-being picture. And we know that wellness is a very personal definition. Yet the purpose of KW Wellness Community is to allow others to find an opportunity to plug into what matters to them to be able to create well-being experiences that support their mental health. Gary tells us that if we don't start with ourselves, if we are not taking care of our foundation, everything else will crumble. So when we think about what we hear in our own business, right? what is the foundation of your business? Lead generate. If you don't lead generate, you will not have business. If you are not taking care of yourself, you will not have yourself to take care of. We have got to take care of the foundations that make us sustainable for life. And that's the purpose of KW Wellness is to allow people an opportunity to take care of you, put business on the side for a moment and be okay with that. I like it. Where can they get more information? KWWellnessCommunity.com shares all, all, we have three levels of membership free which is great, gives everyone a chance to plug in. You get a monthly learning series, and then we have a paid and a leadership as well. I love it. What's your kind of final thought as we as we ramp up this interview, but just begin our conversation about mental health and pivot shift ahead this month? What's kind of your final thought when you sit down with someone and you want them to know one thing about their mental health? What is it? Mental health affects us all. Whether you are having a bad day, you're feeling depressed, or you have a clinical di diagnosis, mental health affects all of us. Whether you have it personally or you're living with someone who has it, you do not escape mental health. We wanna get the word out that everyone is enough. Everyone deserves support. You're not alone. You are worthy. You are perfect exactly the way that you are. And the more that you let people know the support that you need or the kind of day that you're having, the better it allows others to respond in a way that can support you mm. and give people the chance to fight for your well-being. It's really good. It's really good stuff. And I love the advice you gave us, right? Take time for you, add leverage, have professionals in your life that can support you. And, uh, and when you do that, you're setting yourself up uh, to, to kind of succeed when it comes to your mental health and be aware of those times that you're going to need some support. So I love it. Kimberly, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks for all you're doing for our company and for the agents in it. And we're excited to continue this conversation throughout the month. So we'll do a couple of more sessions here in May that are about you and just keeping your mental health right. And of course, as always, you're invited to join us every morning at 8 Eastern for our mastermind call. See, there you'll see that you aren't alone that there's lots of people that are experiencing similar challenges and 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 have uh, and, and maybe some out in front of you to show you how to get some of the results that you want. So we encourage you to come join us for that as well. Kimberly, thanks for being here. Everybody, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.